Welcome friends, in this video I want to go over the major steps required to find, download and install Visual Studio 2017 Community. So begin by doing a search on Google as I have for example here. And then usually you can click on a link like something that says what's new in Visual Studio 2017 and so on. At least as of now that brings you to a page that looks like this. From here you simply select download Visual Studio. It opens up a set of options and you want to click on the one that says Community 2017 because it's free. At the next stage, you'll be prompted to save an installer to your system, so please do so. Make sure that, for example, if you're using Chrome as I am here, on the bottom left hand side, the installer is saved and make sure that it ends in EXE and not some other extension on that file. Then you just click it. And it gives you a sequence of screens that you follow to complete the installation process. All right, so the next screen might look very similar to this one. From here, you want to choose some of the basic options that will be useful. So if you look very carefully, there are little check marks next to the following ASP.NET and Web Development. There's a little check mark in a blue box under that option. And then also under Data Storage and Processing and also under .NET Desktop Development. So just choose those to be super safe and to be sure that everything that you have on your system will be sufficient to complete the course. And then simply continue. At the next stage, is going to usually acquire some files first and then apply them. That process can take an extended period of time, so just be aware of that. Assuming that the installation has gone well, as one of the last screens that you will see is one that looks like this one here. Simply click the launch button that you see and then wait for Visual Studio to come up for the first time. All right, so here's Visual Studio. And before we finish up this video, I want to show you how to configure some fundamentally useful things that are helpful when you're learning technical material. So this is Visual Studio. If you go into the upper right hand corner, there's a little box that says quick launch into that box type font and then choose the first option that says environment and then there's a little arrow and then it says fonts and colors choose that and from this screen which by default if you're doing this for the first time usually looks very small you can configure various settings so take a look here first of all from this drop down list here you want to choose the text editor setting. So make sure it says text editor. And notice that here under the text editor setting, I set my font size to 20 because I want to be able to read everything easily. So that's one setting for text editor. All right, then let's take a look at the next one here. Go to statement completion. And again, notice I've set that to something big like 36. And this is very useful because it gives you a lot of useful tips as you code and makes you more efficient because it completes things for you. So statement completion, big font size. Next one here is the following. Go to editor tooltip. And again, I've set that to something quite big. As you type, this offers a lot of useful information so you have much less to remember. So again, makes you more efficient. Editor tooltip. And then after that, go down to environment. And for the environment font, notice that what you see in front of you, especially if you have launched Visual Studio for the first time, it might look very small, but on my computer it looks big. And the reason is, again, that I have the environment set to 17. So the font size on my environment settings in Visual Studio 17, that's why everything is big and easy to read. And to do that, you may first click in that box. You can choose the font that you want. As an example, I always use S-E-G-O-E-U-I. I select that, and then I set a font size like 17 or maybe even 18. And a couple other ones, because we will be working with the data. Down below, you see where it says SQL results grid and SQL results text. You can also choose those and configure them to have a bigger font size. So everything is big and easy to read and understand. All right, I'm going to close this now. And keep in mind that when you make some of the changes, some of them are automatic in the sense that they kick in immediately. 
but some will require you to restart Visual Studio, so then just do that. As an example of that, take a look. If I change the environment font size from, say, 17 to 19, and I click OK, you see that gets bigger immediately, but some of the other settings require you to restart Visual Studio. Then just do so, and that's it. All right, friends, that is it for this one. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.